Okay, we've been talking about experimental design, so now we're going to do, take a look at some FRQs um, on, on basic experimental design and components of an experiment. So the dentist in a dental clinic would like to determine if there's a difference between the number of new cavities in people who eat an apple a day and people who eat less than one apple a week. So we have two groups of interest. Um, we have those who um, eat an apple uh, every single day and those who eat an apple a week. And they're going to conduct a study with 50 people in each group. Now, real quickly, when I read that someone eats an apple a day, whether this is fact or not, I tend to think of them as being healthy people. So I'm thinking the people that eat an apple a day are probably healthy. That's just the initial thought that goes through my mind. Um, I don't know if it's going to apply to this problem yet or not, but that's what goes, goes through my mind as I'm reading. So 50 clinic patients who report that they routinely eat an apple a day, ooh, they're reporting. So if they're reporting, this makes this an observational study because they're already doing it. They didn't make them eat, eat an apple a day. And 50 clinic patients who report they eat less than one a week will be identified. The dentist will examine the patients and their records. So now we have medical records to determine the number of new cavities the patients have had over the past two years. So my response variable is cavities, all right? Why is this an observational study? Well, they used existing data. They said they used the records. That's one reason. The biggest thing, no random assignment of subjects to the treatment groups. Um, the people were not randomly assigned to eat an apple and they were a, a day and they were not randomly assigned to not to eat less than one apple a week. So because they were not assigned to the treatment groups, no treatments were imposed, this is an observational study. It's not an experiment. Explain, explain the concept of confounding in the context of this study. Well, I haven't talked about confounding, but confounding is basically when I don't know what's causing what I'm seeing. There's other variables that could be causing what I'm seeing. And in this particular case, we said they were healthy. And when I think about teeth, it's like, you know what? A healthy person probably has good teeth. An unhealthy person is likely to have poor teeth. So I don't know whether the change I'm seeing, the number of cavities I'm seeing, is due to eating an apple a day or due to the fact that, um, that healthy people eat apples, a, eat an apple a day. So confounding occurs when the effects of the variable cannot be distinguished from one another. Hey, that's the definition. I always highly recommend you start off by writing the definition in any, simplified definition in any um, FRQ. Because when you do that, you show the reader you know something. You don't get credit for it, but it shows them you know, need, know something, so that puts them in a proper frame of mind to give you credit on the rest of it. In this case, confounding would occur if it became impossible to measure the true effect on the number of cavities attributed to a group who eats more than an apple a day compared to those who don't, all right? Why is that an issue? For instance, it's reasonable to assume that a group who consumes more than one apple a week has on average a healthier overall lifestyle and that could be the cause for the group having fewer cavities. All right, try to keep your answers brief and to the point, but make sure you cover the entire topic thoroughly. All right, we do not, these are not graded based on fluff, they're not graded on bulk. So try to keep it to the topic, but try and make sure you cover the topic, but try to keep it brief. The last part if the average number or the mean number of new cavities for those who ate an apple a day was statistically significant, smaller than the average number or mean number of new cavities for those who ate less than one a week, could one conclude that the lower number of cavities can be attributed to eating an apple a day? And the answer, no. This is not an experiment. It's not reasonable to draw a cause and effect relationship. There could definitely be a correlation. There could definitely be a relationship, but it's because it's not a cause. This is not an experiment, not reasonable to draw that type of conclusion. All right, our last one, um, which is page 31. When a tractor pulls a plow through an agricultural field, the energy pulled the plow is called a draft. 
The draft is affected by environmental conditions such as soil type, terrain, and moisture. That's probably important. So the draft or the energy to pull the plow is affected by soil type, terrain, and moisture. That makes sense. Rocky soil is probably harder to go through than soft soil. Just, and I'm not a redneck, but these are my best guesses. A study was conducted to determine whether a newly developed hitch would be able to reduce draft. Oh, so we want to know about my response variable there is draft. And um, two large plots of land were used in the study. It was randomly determined which, oh, they randomly determined, so that's good. You always need to explain how you randomly determined. They just told you they did. Which plot was plowed to be used using the standard hitch. So basically, maybe they flipped a coin and they, it's like, oh, this, this field gets the standard hitch and this other one gets the, uh, um, the new hitch. So after the plot was plowed, the hitch was changed. And then the second plot was plowed using the new hitch. Now, this is really important. The standard hitch was used to plow one field and this new hitch was used to plow the second field, okay? So obviously we might have an issue because there could be a difference in fields, but we'll get to that later. Let's see if that happens. What was the response variable in this study? Well, the response variable in this study was the draft, the amount of energy necessary um, to pull the plow. The treatments, well, the treatments were the type of hitch and there happened to be two of them, the new hitch and whatever the standard hitch was. And the experimental units were, I had two experimental units, I had two fields, all right? Because they're the ones that retreat, receive the treatment. Given that the goal of the study is to determine whether a new develop, newly developed hitch reduces draft compared to the standard hitch, was randomization used properly? Well, they said that they randomized, we're going to assume that they did it correctly. I don't know if they put field one, or field two and a half drew, or whether they flipped a coin, but regardless, I'm assuming that they did it. Uh, you all, you as an individual must always describe the randomization process. Uh, AP doesn't feel that they need to. They just tell you that it was randomly done. So because they're randomly assigned, we're going to assume that it was done correctly. And this says, given that the goal of the study is to determine whether a newly developed hitch reduces draft compared to the standard hitch, was replication used properly? And remember, replication means that the treatment is applied more than once to two separate units. Well, the standard hitch was only applied to one field. It wasn't applied to more than one field. So the standard hitch was not a properly applied, replicated. Um, the new hitch was only applied to one field. So once again, replication wasn't used. They both needed to be applied to multiple fields, okay? Quite frankly, if you would applied the standard hitch to the first field and then to the second field and did the same with the new hitch to both fields, we would have been okay. But since they didn't do that, we're not okay. Um, the plot of land is a confounding variable. Well, it's possible that the two plots of land, no matter of fact, is likely that the fields are different. And if the fields are different and have different soil composition for whatever reason, or, or, or one's rocky, one's not, or whatever, you just need to come up with a single reason. I have rockiness, soil compaction, root growth, wetness. There could be all sorts of other reasons. Those are the ones that came to my non-redneck -red mind that might impact the draft. And if those fields differ in any of those ways, and you only need one, then there is a confounding, and you don't know whether the energy being used is due to the hitch or due to the field. And if I'm an unscrupulous person, which I teach statistics, I kind of am, I'm going to believe that I would choose the rocky field for the standard hitch and the soft field, the field with um, better um, field for growing for the new hitch because it would take less energy, all right? So confounding is when I don't know why or, um, or whether or which variable is causing the change. In this case, I don't know whether the hitch is causing the change or whether the field itself is causing the change that I'm observing. 
had I done proper replication, I could have, I could have, I might have been able to make that determination. 